So looking at the camera, look at that trick. So this project really started with a uh, love of old tin robots. Um, it's something that I've been fascinated with. I think some of you might even remember some of my old paintings and stuff all kind of geared around them. Um, but I want to do something more with them. A lot of times they're just kind of dust collectors and they're cool. But uh, that's project kind of started with that. So what else could I do with some old tin robots? Now, the one I'm working on today is not tin robot. Um, but it was just to kind of establish what we can do with it. And then we'll be implementing some of that into some of the tin robots down the road. Part of the reason is the tin robots are not cheap. Um, a lot of them are kind of in that $150 to $300 price range. So I wanted to find something that would work for them, um, but play around with something that was more in the $35, $40 price range. So, uh, let me change the camera on here and we'll take a look at that. Lovely workspace. Here. So I did some disassembly online um, a couple days ago. And uh, so some of you might have caught that. Um, but this is a Saturn. Um, he would he would basically just walk around and then there was a display piece, which is an incredible little display piece. Would shine through a light. And it's got a great bootleg Star Wars slash Star Trek scene that would play across his chest as he was walking. Um, and then Lies, eyes would light up. This one actually had some missiles that would shoot off the top here. Um, the one I got did not work with the exception of the eyes would light up and it didn't have any missiles. So I paid, I think, I might've paid 60 for it. Um, it's from the seventies. So it is an antique as am I now from the seventies. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're going to take a look a little bit more of this apart to see what we can do with them. Uh, let's see, I think I'll screw these things back together just for standing up. I've over caffeine to myself, I'm sure, again today. Something I like to do on a daily basis because with Corona doesn't matter when we sleep or how we sleep because tomorrow is just another day of being at home. Um, okay, let's make sure we save the screws. These are easy enough to lose. Okay, so here's all the parts. I'm gonna stick these to the side right now. the head. All right. So I got to go find a longer screwdriver to get into this head. I remember I ran, I ran into that problem before. Man, I don't know what's going on there. Those screws. I have fat fingers. It looks like there's a push tab here. Let's see if I can do this without breaking the plastic. There we go. All right. So yeah, there's a lot of room. Oh wow, and that whole missile system is a separate piece altogether. Huh. Put that over here. 
And now uh, it looks like I got plenty of room for redoing the lights in here. This all oh, nice, nice. I want to redo all of this with LED, but actually these are some nice little tiny bulbs. I don't know. Are those early? Man, those are just some early incandescent. Those are sweet. Who knows? Maybe I'll keep those, but that's. I want to also last for a while. So, man, those are nice. Um, but that'll be perfect for putting little LEDs in. Okay, so that's going to be super easy. Um, boy, nice they taped that because well, I like it's probably kept it safe in the factory. So now I got a taken apart robot. I uh, have some stuff to do with this, but I can get some good measurements now and get them over to Adam. Um, Adam is a buddy of mine that's going to be helping me with this project. But he's also taking this time to move to Canada, so <laughs> we're not trying to rush him at all. But uh, um, we definitely will get this on the road. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut out this battery case man but we still have a because we're not going to be using a battery we're going to be using a power option um yeah i think i'm going to go ahead and cut that out and it'll give us a real it'll give us enough the other thing we have to think about is um the room I'm going to need for a speaker in this. Um, this I'm going to, have to turn into a speaker front. So we'll have a tape measure here. Let's see what distance do I have? So I have, if I do a two inch speaker, that'll fit in there perfectly. I could probably get away with an inch and a half, three inch would be into my board area. So let's just go two inch just to be safe. And we'll find a two inch speaker to fit into that. Um, I'm not gonna carve away in this yet. To I think I'm gonna put it behind it and then turn this actually into a speaker grill. Um, so if I take and carve away some of this area, um, I can just run um, some speaker screen across it. Might even leave some in for bracing, just because sometimes it's nice to not have to um, put the screen so tight that it um, fails. Uh, yeah, I, I think this will work out really good. Um, so we are going to cut this, because I do have the back hatch for this, so it's something that's coverable. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and clear some of this out. Robot bin here for some of the extra parts. Trusty Dremel here. Um, excuse the noise. Mm, do I even want to turn this down a little bit? Maybe I'll do that. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Um, the Dremel I have is a rechargeable one. It is nice because I can move it anywhere. I don't have to worry about cords getting in the way. Um, it's not the most powerful Dremel. There's, you know, there's professional ones out there that are more for even routing out um, drywall and stuff like that on the construction site. It's very much just like a crafting tool. Um, but I like it because for what I'm doing typically is with plastics and it's plenty for that. So, uh, yeah, 
I'm going to turn this on and uh, excuse the noise. I'm cutting it just like maybe an eighth of an inch below the top edge because we want that top edge to still be exposed. And yes, I do have fans going and I have uh, the window open for ventilation. Uh, there's nothing hurting in there. Still, you don't want to breathe in too much of that, but uh, this isn't a huge area. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and shut that down. The rest of this I can get with my side cutters. This is an annoying thing. Um, I have all these different cutters and pliers and um, things that I need, but they always end up just kind of flopping in on top of each other in the way. Um, I have an idea for a rack of some kind of forms. So maybe that'll be one of my next builds is some kind of rack for putting all my players and stuff more accessible and less, I don't know, less uh, flipsy flopsy. That's not a word. Let's see if I can get this out of here. Well, maybe I'll actually use it. Breaks must melt a plastic way here. It's always fun vacuuming my room, even since I was a kid. Because um, I've always had projects like this going on. And I'm sure for any parent out there, which I am not, um, it's got to be fun just vacuuming up garbage constantly from off your kid's floor. Uh, but I'm pretty sure my parents appreciated how creative and stuff I was being. So maybe they didn't. Maybe they let it slide more than some. But uh Try to cut this the rest of the way. It's old plastic, so I don't want to pry on it too much. I'd rather just cut it. Um, prying on it definitely would uh, probably break it. And we don't want to do that. We still want it to be somewhat aesthetic even though rustic is also part of the appeal of this build. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut it just a little bit more, it looks like. just the melted plastic holds some of this stuff together. So if you clear out some of that.
left of it. Do have a garbage can. How is this as far as shaking the? Okay, so let's see. Let's see the light there. Then that's gonna have to work out a little bit. There we go. As easy as that. Well, the goal is to keep this little switch here as the power switch. Um, still a functioning switch. We can re solder some new terminal ends to the bottom or resettle to the terminal ends on the bottom. Um, but it just also keeps with the aesthetic of the, the oldness of it. So we're going to try to keep that. Um, there's a couple other things we're going to try to keep as much as possible. So like I showed you the LED, the lights on the front, um, we're still going to keep all the red bezels and everything. Um, one of the things we're looking to do is add potentially some other LEDs to it though. So um, there's some ideas kind of going around on what that is. Now from here, I can use my little clippers here and I can just kind of clean up any of this other little plastic that was giving us trouble before. And I'll step on that later on and probably hurt my foot. But that's how we do. That'll end up in my bed and give me nightmares. All right, well, I'm going to sand some of that down, file it, clean it up a little bit. Um, it's the inside. It doesn't have to be super pretty. As you can see, it's definitely a square hole. Well, there's a cover to this a little battery cover. Yes, so I have a little battery cover fits back there um, and that'll cover up that hole nicely. As you can see there. Well, that's as pretty much as far as I'm going to go on the robot for now. Um, I'm going to take some measurements. Uh, you really don't need to see me measuring something. I don't know if that's something you guys want to watch, but uh, yeah, it's been fun. I'm thinking about doing t-shirts. I'm gonna change the camera here. Um, I'm thinking about doing some t-shirts. I have some uh, creators that I've been um, working with lately. Um, some pretty um, on 
awesome conceptual stuff that I'm really excited to maybe get out there. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about t-shirts. Uh, it's kind of a, I don't make any money typically off of making t-shirts. It's more for you guys. Um, I mean, sure, once I'm huge and have billions of followers, I can make t-shirts, but um, with just 50 some followers, um, not that I don't love any, each and every one of you, um, but with that few making t-shirts is basically just to uh, get the brand out there, if nothing else. But I enjoy doing it. It's something I've done for a long time. I used to still screen my own shirts. But thanks for watching Test Plug, and uh, we'll see you with that interview with Scott Cherry. Should be posting tomorrow, I hope. But thanks again.